Maybe things will be different between us someday. Don't count on it, Willie. I won't. But you know, quite often I grow on people. Well, if you do that to me, I'll have you amputated. <sighs> Sheila's been going a while, eh? That's considerate of her. Well, I don't care how long she stays away. Well, I do. Sorry. Look, I'm sorry, Willie. It's just I'm getting a wee bit worried about her. But she's a big girl. She can look after herself. If you knew how difficult it was for me to get her to go out at all... Well, well I go and look for her. And would you know where to look? No. Then what's the point of looking for her, then? There she is now. Sheila, you all right? It was Sneddon again. <gasps> Did he hurt you? No, I'm all right. Just a bit shocked, that's all. Just wait till I see Biggers. He told me he'd warned Sneddon off. I think Sneddon was just trying to frighten me. Oh, he's managed to do that all right. But he let you go. Uh-huh. Because Dougal came along. I hope no harm comes to him. Oh, that's going to be a beauty of a black eye in the morning. Are you not going to tell me what happened? I did tell you, Mother. I had a wee disagreement with someone. With Sneddon, maybe? Whatever made you think that? Oh, well, I forgot to mention it earlier, but uh, that was another thing that Inverdarek predicted would happen. You don't expect me to believe that, Mother. <laughs> you were the one that saw him find your lost yo, and the goats that got loose. <laughs> what was it about, anyway? I'm surprised Inverdarek didn't tell you that while he was about it. Well, all he said was that you and Sneddon would have a wee set, too. He was pestering Sheila Ramsay again, and I'd already told him what would happen if he did that. I suppose you threatened to give him a black eye. Still, you were quite right to try and stop him from bothering Sheila. Heaven knows she has had enough to put up with these last few days. But another time, you'd be better to get in for Derek to sort it out. He can handle Sneddon if anyone can. Yes, Mother. Mr. Sledden. God, what happened to you? None of your damn business. I had a bit of an accident, that's all. Oh, because if a tree fell on you. Get on with your work. I was only trying to help you. Oh, I'm really here under false pretenses, Lorna. There seems to be very little for me to do. Well, except look after Fiona. Very much against her will. That's why I needed another pretext for being here. She can be a difficult person to help. I know. I tried to take some of the weight off her. <laughs> Not the sort of thing she appreciates. She didn't. <laughs> um, you know Ardler Craig House is for sale? Yes, I'd heard. I hope someone buys it soon. It's too fine a house to be allowed to fall into disrepair. Uh, Mr. Galbraith seems to be interested in buying it. Rory? His father, he's been to look at it. He doesn't seem to be the sort to retire early. And Ardner Craig is too big to be a weekend cottage. Uh, Rory's been to see it as well. Oh, really? Is there anything I should be attending to? Well, not really. Apart from paying a woodcutter who's been thinning out the woods, uh, it's a very routine day. Then, since I've managed to persuade Fiona to rest, I think I'll go for a walk. Anywhere in particular? No, I just want to wallow in nostalgia. Hello. Uh, hello yourself. Uh, you've been fighting with Modag again. No. Walked into a door? Aye, one called Sneddon. You should see the state he's in, though. Oh, I'd like to. I don't think he'd appreciate the interest. No, I don't suppose he would. <laughs> Here, Bob, do you think that Inverdarek really does have the second sight? What brought that on? My mother. She said that he told her that she would burn my dinner, and then she did. Everybody does that at some time or other. Aye, but he also foretold that, that I would have a fight with Sneddon. Makes you wonder, eh? Well, you can stop wondering. Inverdarek hasn't got the second sight, and neither has anybody else. I've known of folk that made predictions that came true. Aye, and they probably made hundreds that didn't. The difference is, when they come true, folk remember. And when they don't, they forget. Your mother's just having you on, Dougal. Uh, that's what I told her. But she said that if you come to our place tomorrow morning, Inverdarek will be there, and we'll see for ourselves. Will we now? So you'll come, then? I wouldn't miss it for a pension.
So how is Miss Fiona then? According to Dr. Wallace, fit and healthy. Good, good. There should be no problems then. My mind won't be totally at rest until the baby's delivered safe and yes, sound. Yes, yes. It was just as well that she was talked out of that silly idea of having the baby at home. Now, that was all very well in the old days when there was no choice. But so many things can happen, you know. Oh, she just didn't think. No, she hadn't thought about no. it. But when she considered the risks, she saw sense. We were all very worried about her, you know. It was a great relief to hear that she had changed her mind. No one was more relieved than I was when she finally announced that she'd booked herself into the nursing home. You sound as if you'd been surprised. I was. Oh, well, you shouldn't have been. The minute I heard you were there, I said to myself, now, if anybody can talk Miss Fiona around, her mother can. Oh, but it wasn't me. It wasn't? No. It was Dougal. Well, that's it. Finished? Except for collecting my money. That won't take long. That. You have to sign for it. Don't you trust us? Well, what's trust got to do with it? You asked me to sign for it, didn't you? Aye, right, it's all there. Are you uh, staying on a while? <laughs> now, why would I want to do that? I thought you got on well with the Blairs. I get on well with anyone I want to get on with. Want to bet? <laughs> you know, that's what I'll miss about here, Miss Seaton. Your warm, friendly nature. I wish there was something I'd miss about you. It's mutual. <laughs> well, I'll have to be getting on my way. Goodbye. That's the nicest thing I've heard you say. <laughs> Hello, Brian. You going somewhere? I'm going home, actually. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I'm debt collecting. Uh, that's my money. Some of it, maybe. Lorna, you just I've can't... paid you and you've signed for it. That's all that matters to me. You like to try to take it back? Oh, by the way, I've got the money you stashed in your case as well. Right, what's this all about? This is all about you thinking that you could take folk around here for mugs. Does Isabel know what you're playing at? No. But she's not going to if you know what's good for you. And what does that mean? It means that you get your money back. If you do exactly as I tell you. I'm glad you and Willie are back together again. I like him. So do I. It's just a shame I can't feel the way he wants me to. I wish I could. It's not the sort of thing that comes of wishing. I hurt him really badly when I went off with Jim. Mm. You know, he was talking about leaving Glendarroch. The trouble is, I know I would do it again if I felt that way about somebody else. Well, nobody could blame me for that, even Willie. Mm. I wish you would blame me. Because being angry helps you get over someone quicker. Mm. I know that from what's happened to me. I'll probably never feel that way about anybody again. Yes, you will. And I hope next time it's someone as nice as Willie. <laughs> Nobody could get that lucky. That might be Snedden. I'll go and see him. No, I'll go. Look, don't be daft. He's not interested in bothering me. OK, but if he forces his way in, I'll kill him this time. And I'll help you. All right, I'm coming. Listen, I knew you were worried about Dougal, so I thought I'd better come and tell you. I just met Peter Craig, and he saw Snedden after the fight. Fight? Did he say how Dougal was? No, but he said that Snedden looked as if he'd been run over by a bus. Jim's got something to tell you. What is it? Well, I think I, he ought to tell you himself. I've got through the job here a lot quicker than I expected. I've only got a couple of things to tidy up. You won't be leaving right away, will you? I'm afraid I will, Mrs. Blair. Tomorrow. Oh, could you not stay on for a day or two? <laughs> I wish I could. But it's another contract, Isabel. A big one, isn't it, Jim? Aye. And it means he'll be able to send a lot of money to his mother. Oh, well, that's good. You must have known about this last night. Eh, uh, aye, but Mr. Blair didn't want to spoil it by telling me right away. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And uh, here's the money I owe you. Oh, no, Jim, you need it much more than we do. No, please take it. If you don't, I won't be able to stay with you the next time I'm working in Glendarroch. 
Captain Well, if you're sure that's how you feel. I'm sure. Will you write to us? I'm not much of a hand at writing. But he's promised to look in any time he's passing. Aye. And pity it won't be for some time yet, though. So we can just expect you when we see you, then? Aye. It's been great having you here. Oh, he's not gone yet. Save your farewells till tomorrow. I'm barely going to miss you. Your breakfast is getting cold, Jim. It's funny seeing you behind the desk again. Shouldn't you be resting? Oh, Mum, I rested all day yesterday. You just have to be patient. There are some things even you can't hurry, Fiona. Patience isn't a virtue I'm noted for. No, but it's one you can learn. You just have to. Lawrence telling me that Rory's father is thinking of buying Ardner Craig. Yes, he was. Well, not now. I think not, no. Well, I'm surprised he ever thought of it. And you won't be happy until I tell you about it. Well, I'd be happier if you did. The idea was that Rory and I would set up in the hotel business there. Mm -hmm. But you didn't want to? Not enough. Was it loyalty to the estate that prevented you? Partly. But you don't need to blame yourself for that. I uh, didn't think that Rory would ever have been happy if he'd given up his work. He'd have done it for you. Which is very flattering. But I've got memories of two people who tried to compromise in a way that just didn't satisfy any of them. Meaning your father and I? Watching the two of you grow apart. You've got me. I should have killed myself while I had the chance. Carol! What are you doing here? Who's Carol? She's not here. Well, where is she? I thought she was staying with you. She's not here now. Not scared of Mr. Snedden anymore, eh? I don't think of any need to be now. What was it you wanted with Carol? I want to know why she chucked me like that. I think you know very well why. Yes, you. You, Sheila, you turned her against me. That's what you told Isabel, isn't it's it? It's the truth. Isn't it the truth, Jim? I know you tried to kill Carol. Do you? That's a very dangerous thing to say, Sheila. I wouldn't tell my fly. What is it about this place? I mean, I'm decent to you all. I get on with you all. And now, all of a sudden, you all hate me! If you mean Brian Blair, there's nothing sudden about it. He sussed you out the day you arrived. <laughs> well, it took him a long time to show it then. You're not really half as clever as you seem to think you are. That was only to protect Isabel. He would do anything to stop her from being hurt. Then he'd better be careful. He's not playing as strong a hand as he thinks he is. If you're thinking of using that against him, then there's one thing you'd better take into account. Oh, aye. And what's that? Brian once killed to protect Isabel. He might just do it again. Come in, Brian. You're okay now. You down there. Um, yeah. Isabel! Focus. What happened to I him? I don't know. I thought. 
phone. He must sleep in the peat shed. But uh, hasn't he said anything? Well, he's talked, but he hasn't made sense. Oh, I'm not surprised. The state is in. I, I think he was the one frightening folk in the woods. Why would he do that? <sighs> Maybe his mind's gone. I better call Dr. Wallace. No. Can I have something to eat? I'm starving. Yes, of course you can, Fergus. I've been starved and frozen for ages. When I've eaten, you can do what you like with me. What do we want to do with you, Fergus? Hand me over to the police. Why would we do that? Fergus, what you've done is frighten a few folk. Taking some eggs, nobody's going to prosecute you for that. If I'd only drowned myself when I had a mind to. The people came and I, I ran away. Just never found the courage to try again. See, I'd, I'd started to believe I'd always get away with it, till that business with the teacher. It's bad enough when you told me they expected to make an arrest soon, but when Big Ears came and chapped at my door, I knew I had to do something, something desperate. You wrote those anonymous letters? You didn't know it? Well, everybody will when the police come to fetch me. I don't feel right doing this to Bob and Dougal, Mrs. Lachlan. Oh, now, now, they thought nothing of doing it to you and Badarak. Sit down. Well, I suppose maybe they thought it was just a joke, eh? Well, we can have a wee joke, too. What's sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. Aye. Now, you wouldn't let me down now, would you? Well, I suppose if you put it like that. Morning, Mrs. Lachlan. <gasps> Bob? Uh huh. Oh, it's yourself, Inverdarek. Aye, it is. How are you feeling? Fine, I think. Glad to hear it. Oh, Bob, look. Here's the birthday cake I got for Donald. <laughs> got it in the baker's in Octarn, and you have to order it three weeks in advance so it arrives on the right day. Oh, well, that should go down well. Oh, aye. So, Inverdarek, are you going to show us some more examples of the second sight? I don't know about that, Bob. Uh, well, well, before you start, wait till I find my pipe. Uh, have you seen it anywhere, Mother? I couldn't find it at all this morning. No, I have not. You would lose your head if it wasn't screwed on. Oh, well, maybe Edward Dark will tell us where it is when we get round to his prophesying, eh, Dougal? <laughs> uh, well, now, uh, Bob, you see, the second sight isn't something you can switch off and on just oh. like that. Uh, well, well, we're waiting for it to switch on. I'll just light this fire. It's chilly in here. Uh, 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 oh, he's, he's gone into a trance. <laughs> You must not light that fire. What's that? He said you mustn't light the fire. Why mustn't I light the fire? Why must I not light the fire? I don't know. You just told me not to. Did I? You did. Uh, well, well, now that's funny, eh? Because I, I don't remember. Sure, I'll just light it anyway. <laughs> oh, I think you should pay heed to what Invadara says, Dougal. Ah, rubbish, Mother. Oh, he's away again! <laughs> Maybe he'll tell us where Dougal's pipe is now. <laughs> Dougal's pipe is up the chimney. Your pipe's up the chimney, Dougal. <laughs> Mother, you put in Verderick up to this. You, you sat on Donald's cake. I knew that would happen. Thanks, Isabel. There's your cup, Fergus. Oh, you found it, did you? Isabel, I thought you'd been drowned. I don't think I'll be needing this now. How could you do it, Fergus? I write the letters? I don't rightly know. If it's to try and tell you, you'd never understand. We could try. See, you've always been somebody. How can you know what it feels like to be nobody? Oh, yeah, are you saying that? You're not nobody. Are you saying that, but you don't believe it? You know, just a name and address, no face, no personality, no friends. If I was to disappear into thin air, you'd never even notice somebody else started delivering your mail. What's all this got to do with it? You get fed up being nobody. So one day I sat down and I wrote to somebody telling them what I thought of them. I never put my name to it, because if I had, they'd never have bothered with it. And I put it in the post. And just for once, I felt like I was somebody. For the first time in my life. So you went on writing them? I couldn't stop. Even when I knew most people just tore them up, I still felt good when I wrote them and delivered them. It never did anyone any harm, did How it? How do you know that? It did Miss Simmons a lot of harm. I thought she deserved it. You were wrong. 
That's when it all got out of hand. Then when I knew the police were on to me, there was nothing for me to do. Nowhere to go. That's when I went to kill myself. And I wish I had managed. Nothing's worth killing yourself for, Fergus. Who would miss me? So I went into the woods and I lived rough. I was cold, I was miserable and I was lonely. Once that man Sneddon took a shot at me, that nearly got me as well. When I saw people, I used to try and watch them without them seeing me. But they knew I was there and get frightened and run away. It was like being a ghost. you think I'd be used to that, but no. I mean, I've been a ghost all my life. See, since I've talked this much, thirsty business talking. Do you think I could have a drink of water? I'll get you one. No, thanks, Isabel. You've done enough for me. Let me get it myself. Find a tumbler in the kitchen. What are we going to do about it? I think he's had enough, don't you? I'll have a word with him. Now don't do it, Fergus. You'll make an awful mess in our kitchen. I don't think I've got the nerve to anyway. I'll find another way. I can't bear to think of people knowing what I did. And I can't go to jail. Oh, Fergus, we're not turning you in. Oh, thanks, but it doesn't change anything. I'm not going back to the forest again. You don't have to. The police don't know that you wrote those letters. Well, why did McPhee come to my house? To ask questions, that's all. Can I go home, then? You won't ever do this again, will you? Oh, I'll just go back to being a nobody all the time. 